Welcome back everybody to Titans Tube. My name is Justin and this is Jake here and guys, it's time. It's time we break it down. Uh, the Titans will be hosting the Arizona Cardinals first game of the season. Uh, Jake, how are you feeling? Are, are, you, are you excited? I'm, I'm, it's, it's freaking time. Let's go. Let's play some meaningful football, right? Oh my goodness. Excitement levels through the roof. Uh, if you watched our kind of season off season recap video, preseason recap, uh, you know that our expectations are absolutely through the roof for this Titans team. So yeah, just excited to kick, kick off meaningful <laughs> football, kick off week one. At home, Justin, you have a fun fact about the Titans opening at home, or maybe yeah. a not so fun fact. Actually, it's, it's, it's not, not so quite fun. that fun. But go ahead. I, I was just thinking about this uh, right before we started recording. But the last time the Titans opened the season at home <clears throat> and won a game was way back in 2010 against the Oakland Raiders. the The Titans won 38 to 13. Uh, Chris Johnson had a great game. We go way back to, to Chris Johnson. That's the last time we opened a season at home and won. We've we've won away from home in week one a lot, but remember the Vikings came to town and took us out. We've lost to uh, the Raiders at home uh, in 2017. So interesting that we haven't done this in 11 years. So hopefully we can break that little trend and, and yeah. win, win a game in week one at home. So Would love to see it. Yeah, that would that would start off uh, things very well. But uh, let's 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 break down this uncommon Arizona Cardinals opponent coming to town. Yeah. Um, just a brief again history lesson. Everyone remember the miserable game four years ago we had in Arizona when we lost Lane Gabbert and the Arizona Cardinals by like a twelve to seven score. That was some malarkey, Jake. I tell you what, that was some serious malarkey. Mike Malarkey, love that coach, and we just did not look ready to play that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I, and I love it's it too. funny you that you uh, wear the Mari Goda shirt today. That was the infamous, <laughs> you know, Marcus nothing. Mariota said he was pissed off because they lost. And then obviously his mother gave him a phone call and he had to apologize to all Titans media for saying uh, the P <laughs> word, the P I S S E D word. Uh, not so good. not good. Bad luck. You know, when Mario is swearing. Yeah, there's it's not kids a good that day. look up to you, Marcus. I mean, you should be ashamed of yourself. It's good that you're a backup quarterback <laughs> and you don't have to talk to the media with your potty mouth. Oh man. Anyway, <clears throat> but yeah, yeah we're gonna kind of go about this the same way we did last season. It's kind of the Titans passing offense versus Cardinals passing defense. Titans rush offense, Cardinals rush defense, et cetera, et cetera. Flip sides of the ball, and we're gonna see you know who takes the advantages in each. Yeah. All right, let, let's start it off. Uh, so, okay, so this is an Arizona Cardinals team that finished 8-8 uh, eight and eight last year, I believe. And they started out really well. They were knocking off some really strong teams. I think they had a 6-3 and three record at one point with the Hail Mary to DeAndre Hopkins against the Bills. That play still blows my mind. And then they just kind of lost steam and, and, and lost uh, a lot more of their games. So... They've added some pieces in the offseason, but let's go ahead and I'm going to break down this Titans offense going up against this Cardinals defense, uh, particularly in the passing game and the secondary. So Ryan Tannehill coming in, I think last year he proved that the when he took over for Mariota in 2019, it wasn't a fluke. So how are we feeling about Ryan Tannehill coming in with the addition of uh, uh, Julio Jones? Finally, we get to see him in the two-tone blue and this passing offense, Jake. I, 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 th I think... Ryan Tannehill's got to be looking his chops at being able to throw to A.J. Brown and Julio Jones, especially against a Cardinals secondary that's, you know, well, they lost Malcolm Butler. I think that's a huge blow, especially, you know, in the depth, depth department. Um, I, he was probably slotted to be a starter, I would assume so, because he was solid with us last year. But uh, we're, they're going up against guys like Byron Murphy Jr. Uh, he's a third-year guy. Uh, I mean, they're going to have to look at him. A lot of pressure on him right now to take a big step forward for that secondary. Uh, Robert Alford uh, was brought over from Atlanta. He did not play a lot last year. No, he didn't play at all last year. Excuse me. So he's got a season where uh, he doesn't have any football experience in between. But he was a pretty solid starter for Atlanta for the past six years before that. Uh, and other than that, from what from our research, from your research, Jake, I'm, I'm putting it all on you. It's a Absolutely. couple of rookies, uh, Marco Wilson, a fourth round draft pick, and Luke, Luke, L-U-Q, 
L U Q. Luke Barku uh, is a 2020 undrafted free agent. So a lot of uh, new faces back there who don't have a lot of experience playing together, but they do have I probably one of the better safeties in the league in Buda Baker. He was an all pro last year, led the team in tackles. Uh, so he's, he's going to have to ra- rally the troops back there against Ryan Tannehill and this passing offense. Uh, but behind AJ Brown and Julio, I mean, what, what do you think, Jake? Uh, I mean, we've got Chester Rogers. Do we see him playing in the slot a lot? Uh, Cause I mean, we have Josh Reynolds kind of our number three guy, but he's not exactly that uh, slot receiver that Chester Rogers is. So we could see Rogers come in and kind of have a pretty big role in this, not just on the offense, but he's our punt returner and kick returner as well. So he could come in and have a big role in his first game in, in two tone blue, a guy that was not a lock whatsoever to make this roster. And then of course we got old reliable Ferks down to that's uh, our guy. That, that that's our guy. I'm, I'm excited about the his prospects this year with a lot of attention being drawn to these other weapons and also Derrick Henry. Uh, so I like this, Jake. I like this matchup a lot for our uh, passing offense versus their secondary. I, th- I think we have a clear advantage here. The loss of Malcolm Butler is huge for him. Um, I, I'm expecting. I'm kind of expecting us to air it out a little bit here. What do you think? I yeah, you hit the nail right on the head. Uh, this Cardinal secondary losing Malcolm Butler was a massive, massive blow right before the regular season. Uh, again, hope all is well with him. You know, you really hate to see the sudden retirement due to personal issues. So hope everything's all well with our old friend Malcolm Butler. But yeah, uh, this Cardinal secondary is all of a sudden very thin and they have a very big test uh, coming up to Nashville playing A.J. Brown, Julio Jones. I am so, so excited to see them on the field at the same time for the first time as Titans fans. Obviously, yes. no preseason reps for either of those two. But, yeah, I'm also very interested. Obviously, A.J. Brown, Julio are your headliners, but who's going to be the number three guy? A lot of reports out of training camp and preseason is that Josh Reynolds wasn't really jumping off the page or, you know, he's also dealing with a few injuries too, but – um, you know, do we see Chester Rogers come up and make a couple of plays and maybe kind of push Josh Reynolds to be that third guy? So definitely something to watch there. And yeah, we'll see if uh, our guy Anthony Ferks down Ferkser can uh, catch a couple of clutch balls and see how he can debut as, as the starting tight end after coming off the bench last year behind Janu. But yes, uh, absolutely. Hopefully Ryan Tannehill is licking his chops. Hopefully uh, coming off the COVID list doesn't create any rust or anything like that i don't think it will so yeah definite titans advantage in this passing attack love it love it so uh you want to take this one uh how's this running offense and what are we expecting against this uh well we know how this running offense is (laughs) you look at the running back and look at the numbers here uh but what are we expecting there's some new faces uh in that cardinals front seven so uh what do we got yeah absolutely so Something uh, I noticed while researching this Arizona Cardinals team is that, you know, the Titans division foe, uh, the Houston Texans, they had a couple of players that were real thorns in our side for several, several years in DeAndre Hopkins and J.J. Watt. Well, we finally get them both out of town. Finally, they're (laughs) out of our hair. Week one, where do they show up but Nissan Stadium? Uh, So, yeah, the Cardinals front seven is headlined by Chandler Jones, who missed 11 games last year. So he's returning from injury uh, with a bicep. Uh, See if he's rusty at all, but definitely a high caliber player there. And their new addition, defensive end, J.J. Watt. I just I love, you know, J.J. Watt is a person. Great guy. I'm sure he's a fantastic guy. But wow, on the football field, do I hate J.J. Watt? I agree. 100%. 100%. Never goes away. Never could quite go away. So he'll be in the back of the Titans' minds for a while. And then uh, another new addition to the front seven, uh, linebacker Zabin Collins from Tulsa is their first-round draft pick, listed as one of their starters, so we'll see if he can have an impact. But will that be enough to slow down the king, Derrick Henry? I, uh, I am, I'm so filled with excitement to watch A.J. Brown and Julio Jones at the same time that this offseason, Derrick Henry's been an afterthought in the Titans offense. You know, you see yeah. all of this, all of these NFL posts and everything hyping up that connection with Tannehill and A.J. Brown, Julio. And Derrick Henry just seems to be a, an afterthought when he just came off a 2,000-yard season. Yeah. So, yeah, 
The King tries for a three-peat this year. Can he be the back-to-back-to-back rushing champion? Uh, That's a question for throughout the entire year, but I think he definitely can. Uh, Going past Derrick Henry, Darrington Evans is probably going to be out for this game. Unfortunately, a common theme for Darrington Evans, but that does make room for is it Makai Sargent time? Will he see some, you know, reps in the actual regular season? Will he be effective? Hopefully he can be uh, some help in the pass protection department. All remains to be seen. Uh, Something I want to see in this game, Justin, is some Tannehill read options. Tannehill had an incredible rushing season last year, especially, you know, close to the goal line in the red zone. He had several rushing touchdowns, over half a dozen. Um, But I want to see Tannehill keep that defense honest by taking some of those, pulling some of those, having a few QB keepers for a first down. Uh, It's open all the time. We see defenses collapse on Derrick Henry all the time. So I would love to see Tannehill keep a couple and make a little splash in the rushing game. Uh, You know, even with all the additions to the Cardinals front seven, I'm still going to give the advantage to Derrick Henry and this rushing offense until proven otherwise. I mean, the only real concern you can have about the Titans rushing game is that right tackle position. Mike Rabel still yet to name a starter at this point. Uh, But, you know, Derrick Henry's the king until – until proven otherwise, until he's knocked off. So, I don't know. Do you think that the Cardinals can stop Derrick Henry in this game? Uh, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to bring up the right tackle position, and that could be an issue. I think that's – I assume that's where J.J. Watt's going to be doing most – I mean, I know he moves around a lot on the line, but I think he comes around that right slide a lot. So, we're going to have to game plan to give who right tackle for us uh, is going to be. We're going to have to give him a little bit of help, uh, maybe some tight ends or whatever – whatever you do, chip, chip, chip on him a little bit. Yeah. Um, Cause I, you know, and Taylor Lewan on the other side, I think he can hold his own. Hopefully. I mean, speaking of coming back from injury from Taylor Lewan or Chandler Jones, I mean, Taylor Lewan also coming back from injury. So hopefully he can get back to form and hold his own against Chandler Jones in the pass protect in the pass protection. Uh, so that that's my main concern. We just saw Nate Davis and Ben Jones has been activated off COVID. So we're full steam ahead, all systems ago. Uh, just it, we got to work out that right tackle position a little bit and see, you know, how, how we're looking there against these weapons come, coming off the edge. So that's the only thing. But I agree. I think the Titans get the advantage here. Um, you know, I yeah, I, it's hard to see our offense being shut down in week one here against this Cardinals defense. No disrespect to them, but maybe we're just still really riding high off this hype in this build up from the whole uh, offseason leading up to this point. So uh, I, I think, you know, the Titans definitely will have the advantage in the run game and Derrick Henry will, should be able to, to bust some 10, 15 plus yard gains throughout, throughout this game. Hopefully. Love it. When, um, you know, you would love to see the home run from Derrick Henry, you know, always a, a big splash play, always a threat to go the distance. Yeah. This Titans yeah. offense is stacked arm to the teeth. And uh, yeah, I just no disrespect, like you said, but, you know, I just don't see him being slowed down on the offensive side of the ball. Now, <laughs> switching over, Justin, there might be a <laughs> slightly different slightly different look for this uh, Cardinals offense versus the Titans defense. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, a lot of new faces for the Titans secondary. Why don't you take it away with this Cardinals passing offense versus the Titans passing defense? So, just like we said, yeah, about their secondary, a lot of new faces on our secondary. Uh, and they're they're going to be tested with this Arizona receiving group. Uh, we got Jack Rabbit Jenkins and Christian Fulton. Hello, you guys are our new starters on the outside slot. Uh, so, you know, is it going to be a situation where they're just going to stay on their side? And if DeAndre Hopkins lines up over here, Jenkins has him. If he lines up over here, then Fulton's going to have to match up against him. Or are we going to try to use the guy to follow around I would say, are we going to use Jenkins to follow around DeAndre Hopkins mm-hmm. everywhere? So we'll see. We'll see how we, we cover him. But, I mean, it's not just him. I mean, they've got Christian Kirk, who's been a quality uh, wide receiver two, wide receiver three for him. And, uh, you know, A.J. Green, can he come back and be be that guy that he was? I mean, he's a little older. He's not going to be as explosive for sure as he used to be. But I think he can still be pretty, pretty dang effective, especially when he's not having to draw all the coverage as a number one wide receiver. And um, 
And a big note here, and I totally agree with you as I was, I was reading over this, uh, Rondale Moore, the rookie pick, uh, I think, was he a third round pick or fourth round pick from Purdue? Mm. It could be the second round. I, I can't remember. Yeah. But uh, I also wanted the Titans to pick this guy. I know you said the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, he looks like an explosive, dangerous weapon. And that matchup, whoever's covering him is pretty scary because I think he's, he's going to be an, uh, an explosive player for that offense this year. Uh, it could be, uh, I mean, is Elijah uh, Molden our guy? Is he going to be our Probably. slot guy? We might Probably. see a lot of Elijah Molden and Rondell Moore uh, matching up against each other. Uh, so that, that's going to be a tough task for him if, if he's our guy. Uh, so he worries me. Um, you know, I, I do like our safety duo. Again, we say it all the time, Bayard and Hooker. We're expecting big things. Uh, we're expecting Hooker to continue this uh, this escalation uh, year after year. Year, He's just getting better and better. Uh, but are, are these cornerbacks that we have enough to lock down this, this dangerous receiving group from Arizona with Kyler Murray back there? who's always a threat to run with the football. We, I mean, we, they can't cover these receivers for forever. So if we're able to, you know, get back there to Kyler Murray, we got to get to him fast and bring him down so he can't extend plays with his legs. Uh, but it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for the secondary. So I don't know. I, I, I think I'm kind of leaning the Arizona Cardinals have the slight advantage in, in this matchup here, man. Uh, yeah. But we'll see. You know, mm -hmm. you never really know with your first game how, how things are yeah. going to shape up. Yeah. Uh, not just for particular players or position groups, but whole teams. People fall flat out of the gate week one, week two, and then they turn it around and become very strong playoff teams by the end of the year. So uh, I don't know. Yeah, but this this matchup kind of scares me here. This is where the, the game could be possibly be lost, in my yeah. opinion. Definitely. Uh, yeah, A.J. Green is getting a little up there, but you know we're talking so much about this Titans duo on the outside of Julio and A.J. Brown. But, you know, they have a pretty, pretty good trio in Arizona, like you said, A.J. Green, D-Hop, and uh, Christian Kirk. Uh, so it's definitely a tall task for these Titans corners. And Christian Fulton and Jack Rabbit Jenkins are my players to watch this game. Uh, you know, obviously week one can't predict an entire season, but I think you're going to get a taste of what the Titans defense is going to look like this year. Obviously the biggest question mark being their secondary. So, yeah, I'm going to lean the Cardinals' advantage. Uh, as much Titans bias as we like to bring to the table, uh, Arizona might have the upper hand in this category. Um, moving over to the Titans' rushing defense and their front seven against this Cardinals' rushing offense, which I think translates nicely because the pass rush is going to be another big aspect in this defense versus the Cardinals' offense uh, this Sunday. So the Titans' front seven, obviously boasting big Jeff Simmons as kind of its crown jewel up front. Uh, we would love to see him take the next step. This could be a breakout season for him. Everybody's super, super high on Jeffrey Simmons. Uh, obviously new additions, Danico Autry and Bud Dupree are going to make their debut in two-tone blue. Hopefully they can cause a little disruption up front. And obviously you would love to see Bud Dupree get to Kyler Murray and not just sack, you know, he would be, higher in the sack column than Jadavion Clowney last year, just with one. All he's got to do is even a half, even if he can combine for a half, he yes. will have produced more than last year's big free agent acquisition on the defense. And then uh, moving on to Jayon Brown, Rashawn Evans at the linebacking duo. Uh, they have, you know, they started off hot together and then, you know, it's kind of fizzled out. Rashawn Evans has kind of fallen off. We would love to see him come back be that guy again, have that duo in the middle. So we'll see if they can kind of put it together, get to Kyler Murray, stop this Cardinals rushing offense, who comes into town with Chase Edmonds at the running back position, who's probably going to be splitting carries with James Conner, former Pittsburgh Steeler, who also, speaking of falling off, kind of trailed off last season for the Steelers. Um, but Justin, my main concern on the ground for the Arizona Cardinals is the guy who's also throwing the ball, Kyler Murray. He has yes. over 1,000 yards and 15 touchdowns on the ground over his first two seasons. Those are impressive numbers. That's nothing to shake a stick at. He is very yes. dangerous with his legs, so it's going to be all about trying to contain Kyler Murray back there, and I think the rest can sort itself out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. James Conner. 
Chase Edmonds, the, the, that duo at running back, doesn't really scare me uh, as much as definitely Kyler Murray taking off with his legs. I mean, he's he's the X factor, 100% mm-hmm. in this game. I mean, he's that kind of Lamar Jackson where he's, he's such a dual threat that he can, you know, you could do everything perfectly. You can game plan perfectly. You can execute everything. But he just can use his wheels and take off and just make everything fall apart, no, mm-hmm. no matter how well that you prepare coming into this game. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I would still, if we're, if we're just talking about us shutting down the running backs, I, I like the chances. I'm, I'm pretty high on Danico Autry and Jeff Simmons locking down that de- defensive line. And shout out Tier Tart earning a starting spot mm-hmm. at the next tackle position. Coaches are really excited about him, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does uh, in this game. So, yeah, and like you said, Jayon Brown and Rashawn Evans, lots of experience together. Can they get back to their 2018, 2019 form? Uh, hopefully, Jayon can stay healthy for us this year. Uh, so, I don't. I, I would. I would probably give it an even push. You know. Yeah. You know, throwing in Kyler Murray, uh, what he can do with his legs. I, I think this. This is a kind of a. You know, e- even matchup. I feel it. Yeah, I'm. I'm with you there. I was somewhat leaning Arizona. Just you know, if Kyler Murray can have more than 30, 40, 50 yards on the ground, then, yeah, this advantage is going to lean toward the Cardinals. But, uh, you know, just on paper, looking at it, I think it's fair to give this at least a push. Going into week one with so many unknowns, yeah, I'm I'm with you on the push. Uh, You want to go ahead and take special teams, Justin? I know we don't know a whole lot about how these special teams are going to look throughout the season, but we know the kicker and the punter for both teams, and we can at least evaluate that. I mean, they're, they're people, too. They're players on these football teams, too, and they deserve shout-outs. Absolutely. <laughs> Brett Kern, our punter. I'm expecting Brett Kern to do Brett Kern things and pin teams in their ten, within their 10-yard line and or, or just, like, go out of bounds somehow at the three-yard line where it's, like, pinpoint perfect where they can't even try to return it if they wanted to. Love Brett Kern. Hopefully he doesn't have to see the field a lot because we're putting up points. I want to see mm-hmm. Brett Kern catching the snaps for extra points after touchdowns. That's my favorite yes. Brett Kern play. Yep. And the, the kick, the guy that's going to be kicking those extra points, hopefully a lot of them, Sam Ficken kicking. Oh, man, well, lots riding on him. He's looked good in the preseason, but, man, the kicking position has been a curse for this Titans team the past couple of years. Hopefully he can get a, give us some consistency and, and lock down that so we're not sweating bullets when our kicker lines up for a 35-yard field goal. Oh, my goodness. Nothing will give me the season is over after week one if Sam Ficken comes out for a field goal attempt and just pushes it way it's far right. I, I, the season's over. Cancel it. We need a new, a new guy kicking back there. But, yes, no, he's, he should be our guy. I have full faith in Sam Ficken. Nashville Hot Ficken, I think, is the <laughs> official nickname. But, you know, you can do it any punch like you it. would like. I like it. We can roll with that one. Uh, as far as the Cardinals goes, they have they have a few ancients, a few ancient players here. Uh, their kicker, Matt Prater, uh, he's been all around a while. I know we certainly remember him when we played the Broncos, I think, back in 2013. He set the NFL record against these, not these same exact Tennessee Titans, but uh, Very different the 2013 types. iteration of the Tennessee mm-hmm. Titans. A 64-yard field goal. He's still in the league doing his thing. And I couldn't believe that this player is still punting. I thought he, like, retired or something. I guess I don't pay enough attention to the Cardinals. I mean, they're, they're a distant NFC team. But Andy Lee, he is the grandfather of punters. He's been punting since 2004. So, uh, man, good for him for sticking around that long. Hopefully we get Brett Kern until he's 40 or however old Andy yeah, Lee is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I guess we can call it a push. I mean, these the, we've got a bunch of veterans here. If anything, I mean, Matt Prater's a proven kicker in the league, mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to Sam Ficken, who hasn't – has he ever kicked a real field goal for a team before? I don't know. Uh, yeah, he was the Jets kicker last season. Oh, okay. So he has kicked before. But, I mean, he doesn't have the the longevity and accomplished success of, of Matt Prater. Matt but Prater. I don't know. It, it, who cares? It's, it's special teams. I, I, we can call it a push. It's week one. Nobody knows. Easy, easy with the who cares at special teams because, you know, oh, right. we remember the oh. home game against Indianapolis last year. I mean, the Titans were, you know, on track to really win that important football game until there was just several special teams disasters. You're, uh, you're yeah, no news. 
no news is good news when it comes to special teams. I think, you know, there's nothing to talk about when it comes to special teams. That's a good thing. It means they're doing their job, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It's, you know, it's a push. We'll see how Sam Ficken develops throughout the year. Um, But yes, Brett Kern at the, at punter, one of my favorite Titans. You love to see him on the, on the big billboards around Nashville. What other NFL (laughs) team is putting their punter on billboards other than the Tennessee (laughs) Titans? I would challenge you to, to tell me that uh justin yep. do you have some keys to the game and a score prediction for us yeah um yeah i do i i think i'm kind of thinking this might be a, a bit of a shootout jake i can see our offense doing its thing and then our defense kind of having some trouble doing its team. thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> our defense also doing its thing by giving up uh, plays <laughs> and points constantly uh just because I said it earlier, but Kyler Murray is 100% the X factor of this game. I mean, the key to the game for me is containing him. Don't let him get outside the box whenever we we are able to, to pass rush him. Make him beat us with his arm from the pocket. Because, um, he, yeah, he's a dangerous weapon. He can flip a game on its head in an instant. Uh, and if, if we're able to do that, I do like our chances. And I do think our defense is going to give up points. But I trust the offense to keep pace. Uh, I'm going to predict – a 34 to 27 Titans win week one for the first time since 2010. Yes. Love it. Keys to the game. Uh, So I really think uh, containing DeAndre Hopkins and Kyler Murray is going to be a very, very big test for this Titans defense right out of the box. We're going to get a a clear picture of our corners. How can they cling to an elite wide receiver like DeAndre Hopkins? Uh, and can we contain a mobile quarterback who was our, you know, a mobile quarterback was our downfall in the wild card round last year against the Baltimore Ravens. Can we contain Kyler Murray who has maybe a big, bigger arm than Lamar Jackson? So it's going to be, I think I'm with you on the page of it's going to be a shootout. There's going to be lots of points scored here. Uh, but I do think that Derrick Henry, AJ Brown, Julio Jones, Ryan Tannehill, the four horsemen, of the Tennessee apocalypse are going to do enough to out edge the Cardinals. And I'm going to throw out maybe a weird one. Let's go 33 to 24 is my final Titans win Titans win W Titans win that that's what matters. Yeah. I like it that then you're predicting maybe quite a bit of Sam kick and thickens thick and field goals. If it's a 33 pointer, or he could be missing extra point. Missed extra I, point. Yeah. We'll get the 33. Seconds. However, we get there. I just like doing the weird <laughs> score. You know, I, I like throwing yeah. a curveball there. I like score it. Gami. Yeah. I like it. Man, so here, here it is. It's here, guys. Week one. Hosting these Arizona Cardinals, uh, not too unfamiliar because of uh, JJ Watt and DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins, as you said, making their way back to Nissan Stadium where they've made several plays over the course of their careers. Mm-hmm. We get to see him again. What a wonderful time that will be. Uh, but, you know, I like our chances. And how it's, – it's not like, you know, this is an NFC team. It's week one. This isn't going to, you know, determine the course of, of our season, obviously. But in terms of these opponents that we're facing outside of the division, mm-hmm. it would be really nice to be able to get this win. Because if we drop this game, I mean, we got to play the rest of the NFC West, the Cardinals, or these are the Cardinals, the Seahawks and the Rams and the 49ers. I don't expect any of these, those teams to be pushovers this year. I don't expect the Cardinals to be pushovers, but it would just be nice to go ahead and get this W uh, when it looks like this is probably one of our more winnable games for sure outside of the division. So Mm -hmm. it would be really nice. It'd be really nice to start off on the right, on the right foot here. Absolutely. Yeah. You always want to see the week one victory just because there's so much hype and there's so much anticipation walking into it. But disclaimer, uh, you know, for a recap episode or whatever, you know, our account might tweet during the game. uh, It's not the end of the world if the Titans drop this week one game to the Arizona Cardinals one because it's an NFC opponent. Uh, When it comes to playoff seedings, it won't weigh as much. But again, you just want to see the win at the home stadium week one, you know, you'd like to see it. So not the end of the world, but fully expect the Titans to come out and take care of business against this Arizona team. Justin, any closing thoughts for this preview other than tighten the hell up. It's time to watch some regular season football. That's, that's exactly what I was thinking. Tighten up time to watch some football. 
Uh, guys, thank you guys for joining us for this for this preview. If you have any thoughts you'd like to share, you can leave them in the comments below. Uh, like, subscribe, do whatever you want. But you guys just just make sure to tighten up. That's the most important thing. Let's let's get this W. At the end of the day, it's all go Titans to tone blue. <laughs> yeah. Like, comment, Definitely. subscribe, all that jazz. Justin, thank you for joining me on this preview. I am joining you. We're Thanks all for together. Me. Right I'm now. joining you. We are joined together. Everybody's this. joined. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Stay tuned for NFL picks. All right. See ya.